Hi, I'm Michaela from MichaelaCreates.com. Welcome back to my beginner sewing series. This is lesson three, where we will be talking a bit about a sewing machine. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking a bit about the domestic sewing machine. So I have spoken a bit about my brother's sewing machine that I have here, and I've had it for a really long time now. I have sewn so many garments on this machine, and it has worked wonders for me. So today I am going to go through in detail with you on how to thread up your machine. Now please keep in mind that if you don't have the same machine as me, that they are all really similar. So you will see on the machine that they often have little markings that state which number or which step uh, you are going through. So on the top of my machine I've actually got step number one and then down here we've got number two with an arrow pointing to put the thread through here and down. Then there's another one down here saying number three, number four and then number five is to loop through the needle. So it is very basic, it's just about kind of understanding why you need to put it through certain points and I will go through that with you in detail soon. So I have had quite a few messages from people saying that they have sewing machines that are brand new and they have never touched them. Um, so please, please, please get it out of your wardrobe or wherever it's stored away and give it a go. So please do not be afraid of your sewing machine, although it can be quite intimidating when you don't really know what you're looking at or what you're using. It is an amazing tool and I promise you, you will get to love your sewing machine and you'll be making so many things on it. So in this lesson, I'm going to go through with you how to wind up your bobbin. I'm also going to go through how to thread up the machine itself as well as talk a bit about all of these components So let's get started with the components of the machine So obviously to start you need to plug in your machine So on the side or at the back of your sewing machine there will be a plug and it's usually only one plug that you will pop in and there will be a switch next to it that you are able to turn your machine on and off. Now the power cord is usually connected to the machine foot pedal which is what you will use to guide the machine when you want it to work. So what we've got here is our thread holder, my one pops up and down which is quite handy and this goes through to this little tension gauge here which is where we wind up our bobbin. So we're pulling our thread through here, it's giving it a bit of tension and it's coming back here where my bobbin will sit and wind up. Now to get that to work, often the machines have a special simple click, so that's just a simple pull to the side and now I know that when I push down my foot pedal, it will be winding up my bobbin. Some machines are different, so your instruction manual will guide you on how to get that to work, but often it is just something as simple as that. So now that I don't want my foot pedal to be winding up my bobbin, I just need to unclick it. And that means that I am now, when I put my foot on the foot pedal, it will be guiding my needle, not my bobbin winder. Okay, so next we have the stitch size. So this here moves. And basically it's just saying what length would you like your stitch to be. So often I sew on 2.5 or 3 for my stitch length. And then when you're wanting a wider stitch length for things like gathering, you want it to be the highest that your machine can go, obviously within reason because some machines can go up to quite a wide stitch. So usually uh, as this machine shows it only goes up to 4 so that will be my gather stitch. So when I change my machine to the SS setting here, it's just simply saying to the machine please can you use stitches between 14 and 25 and on my dial here I can select which stitch I am wanting my machine to sew on. So. If I'm on 14, I know that my machine is now going to do a three needle stitch, which I have a special three needle for the machine, and it will do that for me because I have set it to SS up the top. So I hope that makes sense. If I'm not wanting it to be on SS, I just simply go back, set my, set my stitch length to what I want it to be, and then I switch through, and now the machine knows that I want to stitch number two and I've got it on number two where the arrow is. So all the machines are very similar. They will have a certain uh, guide or little trick like up here changing it to SS. So just check your instruction manual but basically that's how you click through with all the different types of stitches that your machine does. So this button here or this dial here is for the tension. Now I wouldn't worry yourself too much about the tension at the moment and for those of you who are like what the heck is a tension? So the machine has what is called tension points throughout where you thread and also when you wind up the bobbin. So when you wind up the bobbin, this little bit here on my machine is where 
uh, the tension is created because it's going through this loop here of metal and the metal is kind of squished together so it's actually creating a tension on the thread. So then when it comes back through to here it's not loose and floppy, it's got a little bit of tension on it so that the thread isn't just all over the place or too loose or too tight. The same goes for when you thread up your sewing machine. So there are points on this machine where there is tension and usually it's plates that are holding uh, or have the thread in between. So then when the machine is stitching your fabric with the needle and the thread, it has a little bit of tension on it, uh, allowing it not to be too loose and also not too tight. So that is when this little gauge comes in handy. I wouldn't necessarily think that you would need to touch it if your machine is new or that you haven't used it yet um, and often it is marked on the machine what the tension should be. So please don't concern yourself too much about that at this point. Okay, and then we have the little lever here which is the reverse. So when you're sewing, you are sewing away from you but when you want to back tack you just need to simply push this down and the machine will do a reverse stitch which is important for the the start and the end of your seams so that you are giving it essentially a knotting off let's say. And then on my machine down the side I have the foot leather which allows my foot to go up and down and we've got the presser foot and the needle so I'll go into that soon. So then on the side here we also have the uh, manual dial which is to control your needle and this may be used because you need your needle to come up at the end of your row of stitching. Sometimes it's down and then you obviously won't be able to get your work out so that's how you do that. So now that we have gone through the machine and kind of how it works and bits and bobs I'm going to start going through closer up so that you can see how I wind up the bobbin and how I thread out the machine as well. I'm also going to go through some maintenance too so I'll show you how to clean your machine. Um, every machine will obviously be different but you you will get a set of tools with your sewing machine that will be able to help you. So to begin we are going to wind up a bobbin. So to wind up a bobbin you just need to pop your thread onto the spool holder and then from here you want to take it through your tension gauge. So this part is really important as I said before you don't want slack on your thread you want it to be perfectly uh, wound onto your bobbin and to do this you need the tension. So I'm just popping it through the two plates at the top there which I spoke about earlier. I'm grabbing my bobbin, I'm sticking the thread through on my little bobbins here I've got a little hole which is really handy. Um, I think that most of the domestic machines have that as well. And then pop it onto the spool spinner um, and then you want to click it into place or pop it into place on however your machine is to do it. And then you need to turn on your sewing machine and to get this to work you simply put your foot down onto the foot pedal. And then from there it will start to wind up your bobbin really nicely. It also automatically clicks off once it's full which is awesome. And then you can cut the thread off and your bobbin is ready to go. To begin threading up your sewing machine, pop the thread through the top tension gauge first. And then you need to follow the guidelines on your machine. So here I'm going down and I'm following the arrows downwards with the number two. So this is step two. And then from here I'm going to guide it back up. That's step three. And then I have opened up my machine here to show you that step four is to loop your thread through this little uh, holder here. And essentially that is what helps guide it through through down to the needle uh, with the movement of the foot pedal. So from here there's a little uh, hook that you can put your thread through and then I'm going to use my machine's needle threader which is quite nifty. Now I'm going to take you through how to pop in your bobbin. So take off your bobbin case, wherever that may be, it will be towards the bottom of the machine, and grab your bobbin. Make sure that the bobbin is spinning anti-clockwise when you pop it into the machine. And then from here, there is a little uh, latch which you can just see I popped my thread through. That's really important. So that is the bobbin tension. And that is all that you need to do. So popping in the bobbin is really important. You need to make sure that it is spinning anti-clockwise. Otherwise your machine will get jammed and all sorts of odd things will happen. From here you can pull your bobbin thread up. Um, this just helps start your sewing off nice and tidy. Then you want to pull your threads through the foot and to the back. This here is how you change your 
foot so you can change to a button foot or a buttonhole foot and this little lever here is how you take your feet off. Now I'm going to guide you on changing a sewing machine needle. So first step is to always turn off your sewing machine in case you accidentally touch the foot pedal. And then what you want to do is grab your little screwdriver and just lightly unscrew uh, the screw by the side of the needle and you will find that your sewing needle will pop out. Sorry that my recording's a little bit blurry but you will find that one side of your needle uh, has a flat edge and the other side is round. So when you pop in your new needle you want want the flat edge to be towards the back of the sewing machine so that's a really good tip to remember on when you're popping your needle into the machine and then you just simply pop it up until it doesn't go up any further and screw it back on. So now I'm going to take you through the maintenance or cleaning of your sewing machine. So the machine should come with like a little mini screwdriver like what I've got here and I'm just going to unscrew the bottom plate of the machine. I've taken off my little foot um, as well and then I should have taken off my sewing needle so please don't forget to do that. Then you want to um, take the bottom plate off the machine and it will reveal the bobbin case area, your feed dogs and uh, kind of just all the components underneath. Um, you can see that there is a little bit of dust in there. So I'm just pulling out my bobbin case and I'm just gonna give it a bit of a quick clean. Um, you can use a makeup brush if you have one or you can buy a proper sewing machine cleaning brush. I just use whatever's around, like here I'm using my screwdriver. Um, that works good enough for me. And then uh, once you've given it clean, you can pop all the components back together uh, and then you're ready to go again. So I really hope that this lesson has helped you learn a lot about a sewing machine and kind of encourage you to jump on the machine and play around with all the bits and bobs and really learn how to wind up your bobbin, thread up your machine so that it does become a second nature to you and you can put your booklet or your instruction manual away because you feel confident enough to be able to do it on your own which is really exciting. So over the next week I hope that you will really practice all of the things mentioned in this video and that I will see you in lesson 4 where we will be talking a bit about scenes and I will be going through how to start sewing on your sewing machine which is super exciting.